G'day, Justin Hogg here from RightSource, talking all things governance and not-for-profit. I wanted to, I suppose, talk through an element of the board meeting that is, I think, very valuable and sort of explain its background and what it can be used for. And this is the in-camera session. Now, I find that this is a very useful tool for board meetings that do use it, but I think there's a little bit of a misunderstanding about what it, well, where it came from, but also how it can be used effectively as well at your board. So. Let's talk about it. In-camera sessions, what does it mean? The name in-camera actually derives from a Latin name. So camera in Latin actually stands for chamber. So it's an in-chamber meeting, which is about when you look at legal courts, it's about a private meeting that's away from people who are watching. So from that point of view, an in-camera or an in-chamber meeting is meant to be a meeting with just the board present so that they can have a private meeting and a private conversation. So that's what it means. Now, what should you look to cover at an in-camera meeting? The things that you can cover in an in-camera meeting are things like the CEO performance, where you obviously you don't want the CEO to be part of that conversation necessarily, where you're trying to work out and you know talk amongst yourselves about your, your thoughts about the CEO performance. Again, that can flow to their remuneration discussion as well. Similarly, if you're talking about the executives, you may not want the executives if they come to the board meeting being there. You may also not want the CEO being there initially either because you may want to discuss it as a board. Um, similarly, it can be board specific stuff like the skills matrix for the board, the board review processes, the board evaluation. These are things that potentially you don't necessarily want to have a wider audience to and you do want to keep it to the board itself discussing. The in-camera session also, if it's held at the start of the meeting, can allow for directors to one, Confirm the agenda, add, like if there's stuff that they want to just confirm what we're talking about when we get to those agenda items, or indeed if there's something that needs to come onto the agenda to be discussed, talk about when we're going to discuss that and, and clarify the process of the meeting. So the meeting itself runs smoother. If it's held at the end of a board meeting, the in-camera session can be used to have a reflection on the meeting. So reflect on how the meeting went, was, was there any things that needed to be improved, which could then also help the board with their continuous improvement of their process. Like, were they happy with the board papers? Was the conversation good? Um, did everyone get a fair, a fair say? Um, was the discussion rounded? Those type of things, which you can do as a reflection piece, but you don't really want to have the CEO or the executive in on that piece necessarily. So it allows that space for the board to have that confidential conversation without necessarily feeling like prying eyes are watching. So, Given it's a private meeting, should you have your company secretary there? Now, my answer to this is yes, you should, because the in-camera meeting is still part of the board meeting, it's still part of that meeting, so it should be minuted. Now, that provides, having your company secretary there if they're part of the executive team can be complicated. So you can understand that sometimes you don't want that person, if they're the co-sec is part of the executive team, being in that in-camera session. It's also part of the reason why having an independent company secretary can add value to your organization because they can be part of that conversation without the feeling that that information could be devolved to the executive. So from my point of view, the company secretary should be part of that in-camera meeting just because it is part of the, the board meeting. Now, what's a good process for in-camera? Because there is a divergence in what, how people treat it. Some people treat it as a secret meeting, whereas other people treat it as a private meeting. And there's a difference between the two. So some boards where they treat it as a secret meeting, they keep a separate set of minutes for the in-camera meetings that the executive have no access to. They don't necessarily share what's been discussed with the executive either. So it's sort of, it's secret. From that point of view, I think it doesn't add as much value as it could. If it was a private meeting, and I think this method is better, is that you still have the conversation, you know, in chamber, in, in camera, so that you can, as a board, toss around ideas, come to a conclusion. But once you come to the conclusion and the executive join the meeting, you then provide the executive with a summary and, and say, this is what we discussed in camera, these are the points. If there's any action items that are coming out of it, you explain those to the executive as well. So it might be, we discussed about the CEO performance review in camera. You'll be expecting the action from this is the chair and the CEO are gonna have a conversation regarding your performance review, and that's gonna happen in a couple of weeks. You can capture it as an action, but then the CEO knows what's been talked about. People understand what's happening. It doesn't feel like there's a secret business happening. Everyone is aware of what's going on. 
The other good thing about doing this is that if something starts going poorly, so say the CEO isn't performing well, you can discuss these things in camera and it's not a surprise that we're having an in-camera session. So if you're having the in-camera session only when there's a problem, it tends to be a signal to executive that something's wrong. And then if you keep it all secret, well then it's a mechanism to create rumors and create distrust. Whereas if you share what's going on, even if something's going not great, you can still share that and say, look, the board's discussed the current performance. There's a couple of areas that we're not happy about. We'll take up these up with you online. Or you can even have a conversation there at the meeting, having first as a board decided what it is that you think is the main issues. So I think an in-camera session is really valuable. The last point is, do you have it at the beginning or at the end of the meeting or both? Now, they don't have to take a lot of time and I think any of those three options is good. Probably my preference is to have it at both in that you start the board meeting with just the board and the company secretary, you do your welcome, you can go through some of that initial confirmation of agenda, even confirming the minutes, have a discussion about anything you want to discuss in the meeting in camera, then roll into the meeting, the executive are there. At the end of the meeting, executive leave, you have a quick, you know, as a board, how did it go? Anything else we want to follow up? When's the next meeting? And you're done. So I think that works very well and I think it helps with the communication flow as a board and also as a board with the executive. So I hope that's useful and I've, I personally found it interesting finding out that in camera came from a Latin word meaning in chamber. So that was fun to share. Thanks for taking the time to watch. We do have a lot of other videos on YouTube in terms of governance and not for profit so feel free to check those out. Otherwise, thanks again for your time. It's been Justin Hogg from Rightsource.